Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the Fish Vet. Today we're going to talk about white spot disease, how to recognize it, how to treat it, and how to avoid it in the first place. So here we've got a tank that's infected with white spot disease. The most likely route of infection is through new interaction of some catfish about two weeks ago. So generally, when fish are more stressed, they're less resistant to disease and we can see examples of it here. So the two main species that are most infested with the disease is the silver dollar and also the pygmy perch. With the silver dollar, you can see that the, this guy here is a bit lower on the pecking order and how you can tell that is because of its body shape. It's a bit longer, so it's not getting as much food as the rest. Uh, and you can also start to see there's some quite sharp demarcations uh, around where the bone and the fins meet. So the other species that are heavily infested with white spot disease are the pygmy perch. So what you can observe from this tank is that even though the platys aren't exactly aggressive, their boisterous nature getting into their personal space uh, stresses out the pygmy perch even more and it reduces their disease resistance. So what you've also noticed is that the platys aren't showing clinical signs of disease, but they are infected. White spot disease is highly contagious and there's no host specificity. One of the things with white spot disease is in the early stages, you may not see the classic clinical signs of white spots, but if left untreated, the platys will eventually succumb to disease. So how do you recognize white spot disease? So if we just show you a photo, uh, we've got here, it's the early signs of white spot disease. There are one millimeter dots distributed evenly around the body, on the fins, and here's a really close up of the eye where you can even see the white spot cysts forming on the eye, on the cornea. So here is another photo. This is of the Western Pygmy Perch. You can see that they're all huddled together down the bottom of the gravel. Uh, and also you can see the white spots and that the fins are clamped. Behavioral changes you may notice is that fish re reduce their appetite. Uh, they'll cower at the bottom or at the tank surface. They may hang out at the water inlets. They may start flashing, which is scratching against rocks or substrate. Uh, their breathing also changes their gill cover movements. You might see them either be very labored or they might be short, sharp movements. Now, you have to be careful not to confuse white spot disease with another common disease called lymphocystis, which is caused by a virus and that's not treatable. So some of the differentiating characteristics between the two common diseases is that lymphocystis, I'm showing you a picture here, you can see the spots are more clustered and they tend to concentrate around the fins, but they can also spread all over the body. Whereas with white spot disease, as shown with the pictures, uh, they're more distributed evenly and you can even notice them on the eyes. The other difference with white spot disease and lymphocystis is that white spot disease in a community tank, it spreads very quickly. Within a week, pretty much all fish will be affected. And whereas with lymphocystis, uh, those individuals tend to just grow more of these spots and it doesn't spread as quickly. The definitive way to distinguish between lymphocystis and white spot disease is to actually examine tissues down a microscope. On the right hand side, you can see that this is lymphocystis. You can see they're nice and round. Uh, they're fibroblasts. They're actually filled with so much viruses that they're so big and round and inflated. Um, but they don't move at all. Whereas on the left hand side, this is a video of white spot disease. You can see that we've got swarmers, which are also known as tomites. They buzz around and move around. Just like a hovercraft, you can see many different sizes uh, and also the, the things that actually look like white spots grossly that you can see visibly with your naked eye. Here you can see we've got the horseshoe shaped nucleus. Uh, this is where they reproduce internally to create a lot and a lot of these um, parasites. So when you're treating white spot disease, pretty much the whole tank of fish are infected including the water, the plants and everything. So it defeats the purpose if you're trying to treat one fish at a time by putting them into dips or baths. So you have to treat the whole tank, the whole system. So some methods, several common methods that we use to treat white spot disease. And the first one I'm going to talk to you about is a chemical free method that's to do with temperature. With the high temperature method, what we're doing is we're increasing the water temperature to between 30 and 32 degrees Celsius. 
The reason we do that is that the white spot disease parasites cannot reproduce at that temperature and so eventually the parasites are going to die out. At high water temperatures, the level of dissolved oxygen in the water is going to be lower. So what you need to do is you need to employ some air stones. With heavy, vigorous aeration, it will increase the oxygen content in the water and this is very good for fish that are actually suffering from respiratory difficulty. Don't use a high water temperature method for fish that have heavy infestations or are experiencing breathing difficulties. Some of the signs you may see are the fish are accumulating at the water surface. They might be gasping for air, so definitely don't use a high water temperature method. The other thing that you need to make sure is that all species in your tank are able to tolerate this high temperature. And in this case, we've got the Western Pygmy Perch, where the upper limit is around 30 degrees, so we don't want to employ this method for treating this tank. So we're going to talk to you now about chemical treatments. There are several chemical treatments that are available through your fish store being sold under various brands. One of the most common and most effective method of chemical treatment is the formalin malachite green combination. Both drugs work synergistically to kill the parasites without having too much of a toxicity effect. The good thing about that is that you don't have to use such a high dose rate. But the bad thing about the, the formalin malachite green combination is that it does taint your water green. So unless it's St. Patrick's Day, uh, you may not want your water to be green. The other thing is that the malachite green component is actually a banned substance for use in food fish. And the reason for that is because it is a carcinogen, can cause cancer. So if you have white spot disease in your aquaponic setup, for example, you cannot use anything that contains malachite green. So malachite green is toxic to loaches and rays, anything that's scaleless. So you should always check the label to see what species it is safe to use in. Some of the chemical treatments come as cocktails and may include methylene blue. And some of the disadvantage of using methylene blue is because it's a superficial disinfectant. So it's going to affect your biofilter, which is living bacteria. It's going to kill them off. So you have to be wary when you're using cocktails of drugs to know what exactly is in them. The other thing with methylene blue treatments is that it colors the water completely dark blue. So you are unable to observe your fish to check whether they're well or, or getting even worse. So it hampers your ability to continue to check on their fish health. So with all the complicating factors, I tend to go with formalin by itself. Uh, this is available through veterinary suppliers and through your vet. With the formalin as well, uh, if you notice any white um, material precipitates down the bottom, uh, that means that the formalin is old and it's potentially toxic to fish, so you cannot use old formalin. So it's one thing that you always have to check uh, the bottom to see whether there's sediment on the bottom. Formalin as a treatment, it won't affect your biofilters. They are used in food fish, so if you're in aquaponic setup, you can use that quite safely. You just have to check the withholding periods with your veterinarian. So we've selected formalin as the method for treatment. Uh, we've calculated the water volume for this tank is 130 liters, and we're using the dose rate of 0.0125 mils per liter because there are some fish in here that are heavily infested with the disease, so we're using the lowest dose rate. And that works out to be about 1.625 mils, which you can see here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this to the tank. Uh, what I normally do is I add it to a jar to pre-dilute it and then distribute it evenly through the tank. And straight after adding it to the tank, we're going to turn off the lights and leave the lights off. And we're going to repeat the treatment every three to four days for a minimum of three to four times. So when you're adding chemical treatment to the water, what you're doing is you're killing all the life stages that are exposed to the external environment, to the water. But those that you can see, the white spots, the spots are actually under the epithelium, under the skin, and they are protected from the chemical treatments. So what you need to do is you need to do multiple treatments targeted at the life stages that are in the water. And at 26 degrees, you want to be treating the tank every three days. Uh, for a minimum of three to four treatments. Uh, but whereas if the water temperature, say for example, in a garden pond is at 10 degrees, 
you want to target your treatment every 35 days. The other thing with treating is you want to choose the optimal time of the day to treat. And the reason for that is that existation of the parasites from, from the cysts where they release the swarmers and termites, that happens at night. So your best chance at getting on top of this disease is to actually treat at your treatment just at lights out. So how do you avoid getting white spot disease or any diseases for that matter? When you purchase a fish, always examine and inspect all the fish that are in the tank that you're going to purchase the fish from and also all the fish that are sharing the same water in the same system that they're not showing any signs of disease. And when you bring the fish home, make sure you quarantine your fish for approximately 30 days to make sure the fish are healthy before you add them to your community tank. So what are some of the factors that can exacerbate disease? We talk about the environment. So as part of a good health investigation, we check the water quality parameters. Here the water temperature is actually about 22 degrees, which is lower than the optimal, which means the immune system is going to be suppressed. Other things you need to make sure is that the biofilter is functioning properly so that there is no traces of ammonia or nitrite, which is direct cell toxins. And also you've got to make sure the nitrate isn't elevated because that can directly cause immunosuppression as well. So if you find any of these parameters are out of whack, you make sure that you correct them because all these little things that you do is going to help your fish get better quicker. Thankfully we've caught this fish tank with the disease early and we expect a full recovery within the next two to three weeks. So thank you for watching and hope to see you again.